Welcome to Focused on Forward. The purpose of this podcast is to focus on recovery from life situations, be it a disease, chronic or acute, perhaps the loss of someone so dear to you in death, or a change of life patterns that has affected you so profoundly that you have no choice but to find your new normal and become focused on moving forward. Each episode is designed to show the positivity that people bring to each and every one of their stories, the successes they've had, ways that they have become so definitively focused on moving forward. We look forward to sharing their stories, and we hope that they inspire you just as much as they have inspired us. Thanks for listening, and enjoy the show. Hello, and welcome to Focused on Forward. Today, we have the pleasure of speaking with Daryl Singletary. Daryl is going to talk with us about a story about, uh, well, not only his life, but also child custody and what he's going through with that, how it's affected him both mentally and emotionally, and what Daryl's plan is for moving forward and how he has become focused on moving forward throughout this struggle uh, over the last little bit. So, Daryl, thank you so much for being a guest today. We're, we're anxious to hear your story, and, and we're th- grateful to have you on. Definitely. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So what I'll do now, Daryl, is I'm just going to turn the microphone over to you, and I'll jump in with a question every now and then, okay? Okay. That's good. Um, so uh, 2020, as everyone knows, was a pretty tough year for everyone. Um, at the beginning of 2020, I was welcoming my daughter into the world. So when January 1st hit, she was four days old. So pretty exciting time, um, learning how to be a father, learn the different nuances in being a parent and not having any sleep. Like everyone tells you, you'll miss out on it, but it's not the same until you're actually missing out on it. So um, we were going through all that. Um, me and her mother were together um, going back and forth. I lived two hours away. So it was up and down the road, two hours there, two hours back, go to work, come home, go to work for the week on the weekend, go up there, she would come here. So we were doing that. And then around February, we all moved together. She came to live with me in my apartment. And uh, we were doing the little, the whole family thing. And um, then July, fast forward to July, and I came home from work one day and my daughter was gone. And she had taken her and I didn't know where they were or anything like that. And so um, I texted her and she said that she would call me on Saturday. This was a Thursday that that happened. And uh, Saturday came around, she didn't call. So the first thing that I did was report it. And then I got a lawyer, lawyered up because um, in South Carolina, fathers don't have rights to their child unless they have a court order or they're married to the mother. So I wasn't married to my daughter's mother, but I was on the paternity test. I was on the birth certificate, I had a paternity test. I did all those things was there for all the appointments, but South Carolina, you don't have that, that right as a father. So I had to go to court. I filed against her and then I was awarded joint custody in October. And that's what we're doing right now, the joint custody situation. Okay. So let's, let's talk about, let's go back to the, the beginning. So there's the birth of your daughter. You said that Mm -hmm. was in in December. I'm just trying to make sure I have, understand the timeline here. Definitely. So that was so that was at the end of December. That was uh that was the, the day after Christmas. Okay, of 2019. Yes, sir. Okay, excellent. Uh and so then you guys moved in together in February. February 2020. Okay, so your daughter was approximately about two months old ish when when y'all moved in together, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So then moving forward from there, and and then the um when you're when she moved out with your daughter was July, July. Okay, so all right, so about seven months old. Um, okay. Huh. Yeah, okay. So just like I said, just trying to make sure I understand the timeline there. Definitely. All right. So let's let's talk about your mindset coming home from work. You walk in the door. What was that like? What What did you find? What was the result? It How was, did you feel? So it was. I uh, walked in and. Um, so she had texted me that morning. She had texted me and said that um, when I got off of work, we needed to go to the grocery store. And so I was like, okay. And then when I got off of work, she wasn't there. So and the, all the lights were on, doors were opened. Um, so, I mean, I thought that maybe they just went for a walk. So 
I was walking around the room or walking around the apartment, like kind of panicked, like looking in, like, are they hiding or something? And then like, um, so I have like cameras in my apartment because I have, I, I was up and down the road for the past year and I had weapons in my apartment. So I always wanted to be able to see and make sure my apartment was okay when I did that. So I went back and looked at like the cameras and like to watch myself walking around like that, like looking scrambled and then like to realize that I was looking for nothing like that. That kind of, that that's like a crazy feeling like to like know then, but not know when I was looking. Um, so I was just really panicked, um, really anxious, not knowing where my daughter was at all or when the next time was I was going to be able to see her. So, Okay. So when was the next time that you were able to talk with, with next, your partner and, and understand what was going on? The next time I saw my daughter was that Saturday morning. She, uh, I asked if I could FaceTime. I mean, I asked all up until Saturday, Thursday, Friday, but Saturday is when I was able to see her. So I saw her that Saturday and, um, okay. she was happy. I mean, yeah, she was Good. able to, old. yeah. Able to verify that she was okay and exactly and doing well. Okay. So, uh, so this was in, in, uh, so July of 2020, we're now in 2021, February of 2021. And you said that you have, uh, uh, joint custody as of right now correct yes sir okay so in that in that time span how has this affected you mentally and emotionally what's what's been the trajectory of of your mental state since since that time since all Um, this began so when all of it really began it was i was really like detached like not able to focus on anything but like the situation i was at hand worrying about if i was even going to be awarded joint custody worrying about what the uh, frequency would be that I see my daughter worrying about all that. So like, I know that I work wasn't getting done. Like I wasn't cleaning up around my apartment I wasn't washing my car. Like I always do, like I wasn't doing the stuff that I usually do, which is usually a sign. Like when people are going through something, they don't do the things that they usually do, or they really fixate on one thing that they usually mm-hmm. do. So um, I, I, I know that I was falling behind in certain areas, but um, for originally, I guess I would say that I started out and I was, really angry about the situation and I was really uh confused and anxious and now I'm I'm more so moving into like um like this is what it is and I need to make the best of it because uh, regardless I have to be able to give my daughter the best parts of me like if I'm going to be in her life I need to be in her life as healthy as I can be so yeah absolutely okay I have to get back to doing the things that I do that I enjoy doing like writing like watching movies like talking to my family like those kinds of things so consistently doing those and then being conscious when I'm around her and like um, emotions like boil up from like like it was a couple couple weeks ago she had woke up in the middle of the night and I was putting her back to sleep and I was rocking her and like the overwhelming feelings of like how I felt when I came home and didn't know where she was and all that like came back like this is like two in the morning and I just started like crying like silently crying while I was rocking her back to sleep and she was like like she was asleep so I don't know but I'm silently crying and she wakes up and like puts her hand on my face and then I just started crying even more but <laughs> just like being aware of those those moments and understanding where those emotions come from and not trying to um suppress those emotions and being aware of them and just ex- accepting them and embracing them because it's not like an easy situation so it's not something you should just be able to get over no no absolutely not so okay now you said you mentioned or you mentioned rather that you are in South Carolina, I believe yeah. that we said. Okay. Yes. Now, what you mentioned earlier that also that there was some difficulty with getting joint custody in South Carolina. Why is there a difficulty there, and what is the the result that you found? So the for for joint custody, basically, that's saying that you have joint physical and joint legal. Um, decision making for your child so they're with you half the time they're with the other parent half the time you guys have they're responsible for this uh part of the decision making you're responsible for this part of the decision making on like the child's life and stuff so um most judges in south carolina don't like to um grant joint legal because they just want one decision maker to be they just want one parent to be the decision maker it's less back and forth and that kind of stuff and so just based off the geographical like location, like when she left, she went back to where she was before, which is two hours away. I didn't know how a joint custody situation would work over that. Okay. But, so 
Um, I didn't know how willing a judge would be to grant that or the fact that South Carolina is quote unquote, a mother state or mom state. So like the mom has all the rights. Like I said, if you're not married to the mother, then she has sole custody of that child, unless you're married or unless you file for um, custody. Okay. And you two were not married, correct? We were not married. No. Okay. All right. So that, that would definitely, in that state, then would definitely complicate things. Sure. Okay. Um, now you said that you found a, a lenient judge or a judge that was at least not yeah. lenient may not be the right word for it, but yeah. I don't mean lenient as far as looking at the law, but I mean uh, a judge that was willing to respect your, your position. Exactly. See both sides. Um, yeah. So I definitely found a, I mean, I, I got lucky. There's, I'm, there's plenty of judges that I'm sure would judges are people too. So they have their opinions, but I mean, I got a judge that, um, looked at both sides and just made a decision for like the child instead of focusing on the parents and that kind of stuff. So it definitely, um, it's not common that men get joint custody of their children in South Carolina. It's like statistically proven. So okay, lucky. So one of the things that I find with, with most people that I talk to when they're going through challenges and situations, um, now you've already mentioned that there was, there was some definite mental things that you had to to adjust and you had to wrap your mind around and, and things. But for many people, there's like a, a day that's kind of a, a, the line in the sand. And on this on this side of the line is their issue. And on and not that they're when they cross the that that day line that their issue is is magically gone and things are better and yeah. and everything, but they're able to focus and I'll use the show name, but they're able to focus on forward. So is there a day for you where you where you can look back and you say, this is the day where I decided I had to pick myself up and move forward? Definitely. Um, so the end of the end of 2020, um, my lease for my apartment was coming up. So I was trying to decide if I wanted to get a if I wanted to move into a house finally, like like everyone says, stop paying rent because rent, you're not building anything, you get a house, you get a mortgage, you get like you're building towards something or whatever. So right. um, I had been planning on doing that at the beginning of 2020. I didn't plan on everything else happening that happened at the end of 2020. So I was like, do I just want to make it easy and renew my lease or do I want to look for a house? So I decided to look for a house, I was going through all this, blah, blah. I got the house and then I was getting my daughter that next week. So I had to like get everything moved in and settled before I got her. So I was rushing to get that, scrambling to get that. And I ended up getting all my stuff moved here unpacked and ready for her so then I, I went to get her and I got her here and when I brought her in the house um, you know I turned the lights on and stuff and I was talking to her I did a little video like so she could see like so I remember her reaction she was like looking around and she was really curious and then she was I went up the stairs and I was making these silly noises and then I like, got to her room and like her room is like a so she has her like crib and she has a little bed and a bunch of um toys around there and stuff like just like a little girl's room it looked like a little girl's room so and she Excellent. like was looking around and she was super excited and I put her down and I was like, you like it? You like it? And she was like walking around and tapping her hands and she looked back at me and I was like, this is yours. And she was, she was like super excited. And she was, how old was she then? She wasn't one. She was maybe eight months, nine months then. 10 months. Okay. Yeah. So no, she was almost a year cause it was December. So she, it was, she was almost a year, but like, she was like just seeing her excitement and like, like playing with her now as she's getting older and she can like, her personality comes out more so like she yeah. knows what she does want she knows what she doesn't want like when she laughs like she's like a, a hard laugh now like when they're little and they laugh <laughs> it's like you don't know if they really know that they're laughing or not and now that she's at like the age where like she's choosing to laugh and like continue to laugh like hard like that was it's just those moments just seeing her laugh and smile is like nothing, nothing whatever else happens happens but regardless like you got to be here to do this so all right well that's cool i like that so Really, I, th I think what we would kind of classify you as at this point, at least I would, uh, I see you as a single father. Sure. So let's talk about that for a couple of minutes, because now there, there's challenges with the situation that you have with the custody battle and things along those lines. We're not going to talk too much about that, obviously. Sure. But let's talk about the challenges of being a single father. So what is if if you can tell us what is the custody schedule like for you if, if that impacts your your child custody then please let's not talk about no, it but it's fine 
so week on week off is uh how we exchange our daughter now so i have her for seven days con consecutively and then she has her for seven days consecutively every other week so we we have okay. a full amount of time with her okay so what's the biggest challenge that you find what does daryl find to be the biggest challenge as being a single father to a, a young lady probably finding so finding out what i want to make like what i'm going to feed her so like originally like when she was younger i would get like the little baby foods from like the stores and stuff like that but as sure. i like get as you, i got older and i'm researching stuff and she's getting bigger and stuff, i'm like ah I kind of just want to make her stuff and she started eating solids like a while ago so like trying to give her enough of a variety that she can taste a bunch of stuff but also like making sure that it's stuff that she should be eating because she loves to eat so like whatever i'm eating she'll like get upset if i don't give her some <laughs> so <laughs> i have to cook and make things that like she can actually eat and like that won't upset her stomach later or keep her awake or something like that. And like, it's hard to know, like if it's doing that, cause she's a baby. So it's not like she's going to be like, Hey, my stomach hurts. She's going to cry and whine and do that kind of stuff. So um, I'm trying to find stuff that she can eat. That's good for her. Um, and then watching her, she is an active one-year-old. So like, if I turn my head for a second, she is moving somewhere else. Like she's running, she's flailing with her arms up in the air and, walking but not looking at what's in front of her like walking straight looking over here and running into like a counter or something almost so like uh, it's just a, it's it's a lot to be a uh, to be a single parent regardless of if you're a father or mother it's a lot because kids do not like slow down she does she doesn't nap much if she does nap it'll be like on a good day when someone is looking out for me above she'll nap for like an hour and a half <laughs> but <laughs> on a regular day it's about 30 to 40 minutes and that's only if she doesn't know she's falling asleep if she realizes it she'll get up and keep hitting her hand or <laughs> her head and mm -hmm. she does not fight an active baby yet for sure okay all right so yeah no um for those who have not been around uh single parents i mean i was right my mother was a single mother till i was almost 10 years old and uh you know i i have a lot of respect for single parents you know the work because you know, you're trying to wear both hats you're trying to do both jobs you're trying to you know there's a people don't i think underestimate the amount of work that goes into being a a parent you know and then when you're a single parent that workload is doubled so out of all the things that you have to do as a father as a as a as the uh the single parent when when your daughter's with you what's the single thing that you enjoy the most uh definitely giving her a bath she loves getting in the tub and splashing the water and playing with the little uh like the, the little ducks that she has. I got her these ducks that look like Disney characters. They're like you know, the little okay. ducks she put in. She loves them, like mini, pooh bear, like all of them. So she'll get in there and just sit in there for forever. And then like I'll be like, You wanna get out? And she'll go back to playing. I'm like, okay. So when she usually when she wants to get out, like she'll try to stand up. So I'll wait till she tries to stand up and I'll get her out. But she loves like loves the bath like that is the way to get her to go to sleep you gotta give her a bath and then put lotion on her right after give her a bottle and rock her to sleep there you go <laughs> there's any time <laughs> lapse within that she's gonna be up for another i don't know how long so <laughs> yeah. okay that's all right okay so so yeah so there's there's always a fun thing that you can find and you can look forward to as, as a parent things you can do with your children so if you look at everything that you've had to go through, what is one thing that you could look, you wish that you could look back and tell Daryl from, from, you know, almost two years ago now, uh, what's some advice that you wish you could give older, you know, younger Daryl yeah, as you move forward to, you know, I don't want to call you older Daryl, but yeah, you know, older Daryl. Yeah. Um, probably just, to. Uh reassure myself that like it's it's all going to be worth it like everything that I've, like everything that i've gone through like um it'd be easy to sit back and say uh uh well everything would be easier if like if i didn't do this or if i didn't do that but like um you can't there's no way to go back and do that so like the best thing to do like now like being here now and seeing my daughter happy and seeing her run around and seeing her 
like enjoy things and seeing like word party is like her favorite show like as soon as word party starts she'll start dancing and turning around and stuff and if i could just go see that like at the beginning before anything happened i feel like my outlook would be like way but i wouldn't have gotten as angry i wouldn't any of that because like it's all worth it in the end to see her dancing and smiling and laughing sure yeah absolutely now, one of the, one of the things that, that people have to do uh, deal with when they're when they're coming through issues and, and things is we talk about this a little bit and you just brought it up again, but there's some things that you have to adjust you know, our outlooks on things and our, our temperaments on things. So what are some of the things that, that you did to help yourself move forward to get past some of the anger issues and uh, things along those lines? Not that there was an anger issue, but you understand what yeah. I mean, that the feelings of resentment or, or whatever uh, that you may have have held at that moment while you're trying to deal with these things um to just remind myself um that like what i'm feeling is okay or what i'm feeling is normal so like not try to push it down um so when certain things happen or I, when i'm getting frustrated to remember that i'm not frustrated at her I might be frustrated at the situation i might be frustrated that i'm tired and i want to sleep or whatever but it's not frustration at her so just remembering to channel that correctly um and not like disassociate or not be present with her because i'm tired or because um i had a hard day or because like this situation is happening period like that's not her fault so just constantly remembering that and trying to be um, yeah no I, that, that's that's good that's that's a good outlook on things all right so one of the questions i'd like to ask all of my guests is looking back over the entirety of your situation. Um, and you can look back over uh, leading up just the last couple of years, what led, you know, moving from uh, the one side of the country to where you're at now, um, you know, whatever it may be, but looking back over the entirety of, of your situation and, and your uh, journey in life, what's the single greatest lesson that you've learned? If you're having a good day, don't worry, it'll change. If you're having a bad day, don't worry, it'll change. Nothing stays the same. So you don't have to get caught in those low, low moments or those high, high moments because everything just keeps moving. So don't get super down when it's time to get down. I mean, you get down, but just know that it's going to come back up too. So be prepared for that and embrace it. Embrace all of the highs and the lows. All right. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, I, I think that's that's uh, really sound advice. I think sometimes when we get down into the the lower portions of, of where we're at, it's real easy to lay there and uh, say, you know, poor woe is me. Uh, but no, that's good advice to know that it, it can and it will change. Sometimes we have to look for it. And I think that's that's also one of the harder things is to for us to acknowledge that that uh, these things can and will change and that uh, sometimes we have to look for where it's where it's trying to change. Uh, and then, like you said, embrace it, you know, yeah. let it, let it be part of, part of the journey. Definitely. All right. Um, another question I'd like to ask that's similar to uh, the first one, but not, not identical uh, is looking back over your life. What is the single greatest piece of advice that you have been given that you live by day to day? It can be about life in general. It could be something that somebody told you while you were in the military. It could be, something that has to do with child rearing yeah um, i don't know i mean I, I've, I've had a lot of mentors and people throughout my life that really helped me and now that i'm trying to think of like their phrases none of them are coming to me but um <laughs> if i had to if i had to think of something i'm sure it would be from uh something that my mother told me and okay i don't have a very specific phrase of what she would have said but just in those moments or in those times when um when like i need her or i call her just to see how she's doing and stuff like that like she always has a just a something positive to say to get me just to, just a laugh like if i haven't laughed all day just to be able to laugh um, with my mom or my little sister so it would definitely be around family like i'm a really big family oriented person so just those calls on those tough days or those good days or when you think of a memory from your childhood and you are laughing hysterically about it and you want to call them and you hope that they remember and then they remember it just in great detail like you do and just those laughs that um really bring you um i don't know bring you back 
as long as you can laugh at the end of the day, I think you'll be all right. It's actually, actually, you ended it with some really nice advice there. Just being able to laugh, find, find a way to laugh. You know, they, they say that laughter is the best medicine. Definitely. Uh, and I uh, fully believe in that. Okay. Now, one more question for you. Mm -hmm. What advice do you have for other, other single fathers or other single parents in general going through a custody situation? Um, I would say um, to exhaust all options that you can to be able to be in your child's life. Kids need fathers, not visitors. So whatever you have to do to ensure that you can father and parent your child, um, it's worth it. I like that. Kids need fathers, not visitors. That's that's a, a beautiful piece of advice. And I think something that's been far too missed in many young people's lives. For sure. That they've had visitors. No, that's very nice. All right. So, Daryl, we wish you well on, on, on everything with your uh, custody journey. But um, even more so than that, we hope that uh, no matter how it ends up for you, that uh, you continue to be the father to your daughter that you that you've described yourself to be and and i can tell just by talking with you and in the, the chat we had uh pre pre-show here that that's definitely who and what you are so kudos to you for doing that continue to be a good father and uh you know hopefully uh may the the one above give your daughter a couple extra longer naps so you can get some rest too so thank you i appreciate that all right thank you daryl for being a guest today on focused on forward and that's gonna conclude it. Thanks guys for listening. Well, that concludes another episode of Focused on Forward. To be a guest of Focused on Forward, you can reach us through Twitter at podcast FOF, through our Facebook page named Focused on Forward, or through email focusedonforward at gmail.com. We look forward to hearing each and every one of your stories that has yet to be told. So until then, be safe, be kind, and be loving to one another as you stay focused on forward.